All right, hi. Uh, my name is Matthew Rousseau. Um, I'm the president of BlueSat. Um, so a little bit about me to start. So I'm a third year computer science and mechatronic engineering student at UNSW. Um, I've run a couple of student projects over the last two or so years, um, leading up to working at BlueSat now. So um, today I want to talk a little bit about BlueSat and who we are. Um, and uh, this is our first time speaking at an event since before COVID. So I'm very excited to reintroduce BlueStats to everyone. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. So, um, don't need to point this somewhere. Sorry, try now. Sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. try, try now. There we go. Sorry. Okay. All right, so um, I'm going to start by talking about who BlueSat is. So we are UNSW Space Engineering Society. So we're one of UNSW's oldest project groups, um, starting in 1997, just to, um, as partially as a thesis project, but really to explore um, satellite system design and development. Um, we quickly grew to become one of the biggest uh, project groups at UNSW, and um, we continue to do that until today. So our main goal is to advocate and evangelize for the space industry in Australia. So our mission statement and our goal is to advance space engineering in Australia from uh, the start. We aim for pro um, project outcomes um, as well as effective outreach programs to inspire the next generation of engineers and aim to connect them directly to the industry. We believe we are in a very special position as the Australian uh, space industry is growing historically and we have a unique and impactful platform as a university group. Um, we figure that there's no better way to show students that they can become space engineers by giving them a chance to try it out themselves. So, a big part of that is um, Professor Elias Abatinos. So, um, he is our long-standing academic mentor and he um, has supported us and taught us for over 15 years. He plays a really, really big part in our operation um, as he shares our passion for advocating for the space industry and creating meaningful student experience. Um, Elias is a champion of the space industry in Australia, and I'm sure many of you have heard him before. Um, he's spoken at several of these uh, workshops in the past, and he's notable as the organizer of UNSW's involvement in QB50, as well as the lead designer of UNSW's DC0 satellite. Um, I've put his email up there in case anyone wants to, sit to uh, talk to him about uh, BlueSat or his work. Um, I'll have it again at the end. So, we run several projects, um, each catered towards a certain demographic of students and at a different slice of the industry. Um, for example, we have UAV, which is our more approachable uh, project, and it targets uh, aerospace students, while Ground Station targets uh, telecommunications and RF engineering students. Um, everything ultimately circles around our satellite project, so um, we also run lots of outreach, because it's a really important way to actually achieve our mission. Um, we run workshops teaching practical skills, um, we run engagement with primary and high school students, and organize industry events at the university. Um, so, our projects. So, um, BlueSat originated as a project group and that remains at the core of our identity. Um, we want to give driven students the chance to work in a real project under systems engineering workflows. Um, we try to maximize opportunities for learning while aiming to generate meaningful outcomes and expose students to the cutting edge of the industry. So, um, the crowning gem is our satellite project. So, it was the origin of BlueSat and persists as our largest project. So, it started in 1997 and is our namesake. Um, <laughs> bit of a contrived acronym, so it stands for Basic Low Earth Orbit UNSW Experimental Satellite, <laughs> which is up there with Patriot Act, um, <laughs> but what can you do? That sounds cool. Um, so, We've had several big revisions from the original, which was intended to explore uh, satellite system design. Um, at the time, um, Australia's last um, launch was in, in the early 90s, so it's been a little while, 
and really there was no CubeSat standard and satellite design simply wasn't understood as it is now. Um, since then, we developed a follow-up satellite for design competitions and we've had two um, sort of ventures into CubeSat design. But that leads us to, the, to uh, today and our new project. So, um, our new project is a three CubeSat intended to explore implanting um, an electrodynamic tether for the orbiting. So, um, we've had a change in focus compared to previous years of BlueSat. Um, we want to aim for research goals over just implementation goals. Because um, in the past, we've sort of, we, we started off by looking for um, all the experience as we make something. But we want to take a step forward and actually directly affect the industry and the world as well as just the students and the university we're at. Um, so our goal is to design a robust satellite system with fully functional electrodynamic tether for deorbiting, as well as a tight integration with our ground station system. Um, we also want to try and enable collaboration between the different faculties at UNSW and hopefully with other universities. Um, we've had a lot of interest from UCIS students in particular looking to join, um, so it could be exciting to grow um, university collaboration into uh, space stuff. So, um, we are um, looking to launch um, in a timely manner. We believe that we can build it fairly rapidly, and right now we're projecting between uh, three and five years before we are complete. So, for the tether, um, for those of you who aren't familiar, it is uh, a superficially simple concept. Of course, it isn't really, but the idea is that when you have a satellite moving through um, the Earth's magnetic field, um, you can release a loop, right, of, of, as in a loop of conductor, and as it moves through the Earth's magnetic field, it will induce a current. Um, there is a twist, however, um, as anyone who has used a pair of Apple earphones would know, if you have a string dangling around in space, especially when it is um, has any possibility of crossover with itself, it will spontaneously tangle. So, um, the cool part of a tether design is it consists of a single stretch of conductor, which is designed to interact with um, the um, plasma conditions of the ectosphere. So, um, because of differences in density and charge, um, electrons will collect on one side of the tether and go out the other, giving us a virtual loop currents to flow across. Um, this consequently generates um, an electromotive force and it can be used for the orbit. So um, we think that this is um, ethically uh, important because um, with more satellites being watched than ever, especially the advent of CubeSats, we do need to start considering how we um, we treat um, the Earth's orbit. Right now, there is not a lot of focus on custodianship of space, and we figure that if we can manage to implement this as a student group, it raises the question, uh, why shouldn't everybody? That does depend on us doing it first, but yeah. Um, I should also uh, mention that, obviously, uh, Sabo is working on this, for example. But yeah, um, it is relatively underexplored otherwise. It's been proven feasible in the past, but there are not really any large-scale efforts to implement it. Um, on this previous slide, this, this was JAXA's one, which was attempted a little while ago. It was ill-fated, but um, there's been very few large-scale efforts besides this and a few things in the main. So, um, I'll talk through our other projects because they're all uh, tied to satellite, and then we can uh, wrap up. So, our ground station project um, began to support the QB50 CubeSats. Um, it quickly grew to become a core project for us though, and um, it was very nice because it's, um, it served telecom students and RF engineering students who generally were sort of left in the cold by these other student projects. So it was a really nice experience for them. Um, our new project is a fully autonomous ground station to um, acquire, track, and communicate with satellites um, with a unidirectional antenna. The benefit of that is that um, we can make our ground station portable, for one, and more importantly, we can get accurate high-power tracking 
and avoid upsetting uh, the hammer here community, which um, we've managed to do even without a gas station or work up on. Anyway, um, the advantage of having this, um, yeah, okay. So next is our balloon project. So um, it's a um, stratospheric lift balloon um, with the um, purpose of testing space hardware at the edge of space. So um, currently we can get up to 30 kilometers of altitude uh, with a 20 kilometer payload, but we hope to boost that up much further. Um, the cool part of this is that it allows us to have a sort of complete ecosystem between our projects. So for example, we can load a flat site sat onto the uh, balloon, which can be communicated with by the ground station, and we can communicate with, sorry, rather test all three of our projects in one password, for example. And one final note is um, outreach. So um, we think outreach is the most important thing we do, ultimately. Because um, while there is a lot of effort to advocate for STEM in schools, most Australians have no idea that an opportunity in space engineering is really feasible, even um, undergraduate students. And that is what we seek to change. Um, we believe that um, exposure should start as early as it can, because realistically, a lot of people um, historically are captured by the ideas of uh, the space industry when they're very young. But without knowing it's even a choice, that's hard for people to do. Um, I've got a couple of pilots here. So at the top left, this is a solar ring workshop we run regularly. Um, on the right is Accenture's Girls, Girls in STEM event. Over here is where we paid a visit to Ronald McDonald House. And on the right was a visit to a high school event, again, for Girls in STEM. Um, but yeah, ultimately, this is the most important thing we do. And if anyone is interested in getting involved, we are very, very open to it, because really, um, the next generation is the future, and it is very, very important to reach out to them. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. Um, if you are interested in getting into contact with us, um, you can send either myself or Elias an email. We are changing to an at UNSW email, so um, for the next week or two, um, this won't be available, but after that, it will be. Um, I also have a link here and a QR code for our Facebook and LinkedIn pages if you're interested in keeping up.